Last year, we reported on PV Tech that work was about to begin building East Africa's first grid-connected PV power plant, an 8.5 megawatt project in Rwanda on land belonging to a village for youngsters orphaned in the 1994 genocide. Only a few months later, that project has been completed and is now supplying electricity to Rwanda's grid. It was open to much fanfare earlier this month, attracting praise from around the world, including from US Secretary of State John Kerry. The plant is symbolic for a number of reasons. Not only is it a powerful example of how far Rwanda's come since the atrocities of 20 years ago, it's also an exemplar of what solar power has to offer other African countries as they look to meet growing demand for power while simultaneously cutting carbon emissions. Ahead of the second solar energy East Africa event in Nairobi next month, we spoke to Mr Williams Nkurunziza, Rwanda's High Commissioner to the UK, about the project and what it symbolises for his country and others in the region. We want to grow our economy, and to grow an economy you need power. And unfortunately, historically, our country, like a lot of other countries across the continent, have invested very little in power generation, which is why today, as we speak today, over 600 million Africans sleep every night without electricity. Now, after the genocide, we, as a country, wanted to focus on growing an economy that is more inclusive, that is sufficient in terms of scale to accommodate the aspirations of our people. And that made it necessary to focus on investing in key drivers of growth. One of those is energy generation. Now, in trying to scale up access, you've got to look at uh, energy solutions that are easily available and easily scalable and quick, you know, easier to, to, to deploy. Now, solar is uh, one of those energy development paths that we have chosen because, one, it is a clean energy, it is renewable, it is easy to deploy, and in terms of implementation, it takes perhaps half the time it takes to build up a, a hydro plant than, you know, uh, it, it is much faster to deploy a, a solar, a solar uh, energy facility than it is to develop a hydro power plant. So the eight and a half megawatts really is a development that has taken about 12, 12 you know, about 12 months because the concession or the power purchase agreement was signed in 2013 and by uh, this month, the, the plant was launched. We see this, the, the investment within the solar, the, the, the solar energy uh, or solar generation as a necessary you know, mix, uh, a necessary component of our energy mix as we develop as a country. And we, we see it as a quick way of getting uh, the, you know, meeting the energy needs of our people much more uh, quicker than uh, through other energy, energy sources. To develop, we need to make choices that are going to make sure that we engage in things, in activities that are uh, friendly to the environment because our environment is very limited, it is very fragile, and we believe that uh, uh, the direction of energy uh, clean energy sources is very helpful within the framework of our national development. And on this particular project, there were two, I think, uh, European companies that developed and built the project. Africa as a, as a whole is still relatively kind of new territory for companies, you know, from, say, the Europe or the States or whatever. What did uh, the government of Rwanda do to kind of oil the wheels, if you like, of this particular project in, in kind of helping it along its way and um, allowing these, these investors to come in? Actually, true, the truth is that major energy players in Africa are actually foreign companies, whether it is in oil and gas, as well as even in, in hydro. Of course, a lot of energy generation on the continent is still based on hydrocarbons, particularly the use of gensets, which are extremely... Uh, expensive and also not very friendly from an environmental standpoint. Um, and the 
efforts that uh, we as a country and perhaps even as a continent we need to do to e encourage uh, external investments e within the energy sector to help correct the en energy deficits on the continent is to improve our regulatory environments and create incentives that enable private investors to come and actually invest mm -hmm. in a secure environment that guarants, guarant, you know, provides guarantees for secure operations and therefore assurances of possible positive returns on their investments. As a government, we have liberalized the energy sector. Yep. Anybody who has an interest to invest in the sector is very welcome. Two, we have created an offtake mechanism for people that invest in the energy sector. If you come and you want to invest in the energy sector, the government provides a, buy, a buying infrastructure that offtakes all the power that you that you'd produce. So we provide concessions around energy resources, raw materials, and provide power purchase agreements for companies that, that come in. You anticipate that solar will play a fairly key role going forward? Well, as, as we see it here today, there is already work that is, you know, uh, there is work that is going on around another project of about 10 megawatts. We expect that by 2017, our energy mix is going to include, you know, maybe about 21 megawatts uh, of solar. The cost of solar still remains sufficiently high. Yeah. We need to see an improvement in technology so that we can reduce cost of production. Yeah. Uh, the current development that uh, we have just launched at 23.7 million dollars for eight and a half megawatts, that translates to about 2.8 million dollars per megawatt. That is still very high. How can we, uh, how can research and development drive a reduction in the cost of deployment of solar? And uh, we also need to see uh, perhaps investments uh, in the, the capture and storage of solar power, yeah. which is going to enhance the attractiveness of this, you know, solar as a source of, of, of power, both for Africa and the rest of the world. The cost of capital in, a, in parts of Africa is, is higher than in other parts of the world uh, because I guess there's a sort of certain perceptions of risk attached to doing business with there. But I, I guess projects like this will all help with that story, won't they? Because it will kind of change perceptions of um, you know Africa as a, as a place to invest in this kind of project. How much do you think that, that your kind of uh, leadership on this will, will have a knock-on effect to other countries uh, in the region? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't call it our leadership. What I can say is uh, we have executed a project that has really been uh, a product of uh, different stakeholders, development partners, donor, you know, donor uh, funding agencies, private sector enterprise, governments, in ensuring that you create an enabling environment for a significant investment in an area that is very critical, both, you know, in Rwanda. Uh, as, you know, uh, you have mentioned, the, the cry for power is not only a problem in Rwanda, it's a, a problem in East Africa, it's a problem across the whole of East Africa. And if the same solution that we have seen around uh, Gigawatt Global uh, uh, can help in escalating these interventions across the continent to help more Africans get access to power, I think it is something that you know, should be encouraged. Power distribution is a very expensive exercise, yes. particularly if you have got to build you know, national grids where you transport power, both in terms of investment, but also in terms of wastage that comes with, you know, uh, you know in the management and maintenance of the grid. And uh, uh, in a continent that is as large as Africa with communities that are still not urbanized, to get power to people is really going to be a fact of how much you can use power you know, solar to localize the distribution rather than feed of a national grid. And I think solar in the days ahead, if we can bring down the cost of technology, yeah. the beauty and efficiencies 
and the cost of effectiveness of deployment will, is going to make it a lot easier to address the power shortages that we have on the continent. Clearly, there is much for other African countries to learn from this project. With the right government support, solar is a source of energy that offers the promise of bringing power to previously unelectrified parts of the continent. This huge potential will be explored in detail at Solar Energy East Africa on the 10th and 11th of March. Organised by PV Tech's publisher Solar Media, the event will feature a high-profile list of speakers from government and industry discussing both the opportunities and challenges for solar in East Africa.